Hello, this is Chef John from foodwishes.com with Taco Stuffed Zucchini Boats. That's right, zucchini is not very exciting or interesting or fun to eat, which is basically the opposite of a taco. So what we're gonna do here is use the same beef filling used to make tacos. And we're gonna use that to stuff some zucchini to turn something that's generally unremarkable into something I thought was incredibly remarkable, right? This is not some kind of low carb substitute gimmick as these really were amazing. So with that, let's go ahead and get started by adding some diced onion to a skillet, which has a little bit of olive oil in it. And then to that, we will add one pound of ground beef and we'll set that over high heat. And we will cook that stirring until our onions soften up and turn translucent. And our ground beef has been broken up into nice small pieces. And by the way, if you happen to be wondering why my pants are blurry, well, that's because I stained my pants and shirt with olive oil as I set up this recipe, which on camera I found unsightly and distracting. So I actually spent about a half hour learning how to blur out part of a video, which I have to say was surprisingly exciting. And it might come in very handy in the future if I ever forget to put on pants. But anyway, back to the beef, which like I said, we're gonna cook stirring over high heat until it's nicely crumbled and our onions have turned translucent. And once that happens, what we'll do is toss in some minced garlic, as well as one finely diced jalapeno, or any other kind of fresh pepper, or no pepper. But I had one lying around, so I tossed it in. And what we'll do is cook that stirring for about two minutes or so, before we add in all our secret spices and herb. And for me, that's gonna start with some kosher salt, a nice spoon of chili powder, some paprika, some cayenne pepper, of course, some ground cumin, a little bit of dry oregano, and then one possibly surprising ingredient, a couple teaspoons of cornmeal, which is just gonna help tighten up that final texture a little bit. And what we'll do is stir all that together and cook it for about a minute. Oh, and if you happen to forget adding your freshly ground black pepper, don't worry, just stop and add it here. And that's it, once we've cooked in our seasonings for about a minute or so, we can go ahead and stir in our tomato sauce. And technically, if we wanted to, we could just cook this for a couple more minutes and we'd be done. And we could use it as is, or what I'm recommending if we have a few extra minutes, and that would be to rinse out whatever we had our tomato sauce in with about a half a cup of water. And we'll go ahead and stir that in. And then what we'll do once it starts boiling again is turn our heat down to medium and just let this simmer for about five or 10 minutes, stirring occasionally, until most of that liquid is simmered out and our mixture gets as thick and dry as we want, which for me looked a little something like this. So yes, we are adding a little bit of time to the recipe with this step but I do think we're gonna end up with a little bit of a nicer texture. Plus it will give all our ingredients a little extra time to mingle together. And that's it, we'll go ahead and taste that for seasoning. And if we're happy with it, which I was, we'll simply turn that off and we'll let that sit and cool while we move on to prep our zucchini. And for that, we'll be using a classic four-step method. Oh yeah, the old trim half scoop and salt, which means we'll trim a little bit off that stem end if needed before cutting these exactly in half lengthwise. And please take your time. Right, this is not a game of speed. And we really do want these pieces as uniform as possible so that they cook evenly. And then what we'll do once the trimming and halving is done is take a small spoon or a melon baller and we will scoop out roughly half the insides to create that classic zucchini boat shape. And while a spoon will work, a melon baller has a much sharper edge, which I think is gonna work better for this. Plus you usually get two size scoops, so we can start it with the bigger one and then do some fine tuning with the smaller one. And by the way, a lot of recipes say to save those scraps you're trimming and then chop it up and add it to your filling. But I'm not gonna do that because the last time I had a ground beef taco that had zucchini scraps chopped up in it was never. So I will not be using that. And we'll just go ahead and throw that into compost. And then what we'll do once all our zucchini halves have been prepped is go ahead and salt them fairly generously with kosher salt, making sure we get that all over. All right, bow to stern, starboard and port side. And what we'll do here is let these sit for about 15 or 20 minutes. And during that time, as you'll see, that salt's gonna draw out a lot of moisture, which we can then blot away with a paper towel. And not only does this step season and make the zucchini more delicious, as in a lot more delicious, but because we're drawing out liquid, it also improves the texture. So it might seem like kind of a minor step, but it's actually kind of a big deal. It makes a huge difference. And that's it, once our boats have been salted and that excess moisture soaked up, We'll go ahead and fill those up with as much taco meat as we can fit, at which point we'll transfer those onto a line baking sheet. Oh, and by the way, I'm doing the all meat version here, but if you want to stretch your beef, you could, if you want, toss in some corn or maybe some beans or both. 
I mean, you are after all the Dan Coats of your taco stuff zucchini boats. And speaking of national intelligence, it is a really smart idea to line your baking sheet with one of these silicone baking mats. Because what we're going to do next once these are filled is top them with cheese. A lot of cheese. All right, pepper jack in my case. And what's going to happen because we're using so much? Some of it's going to melt and drip down onto the pan. And as these bake, that's going to get all beautifully crispy and caramelized. And if you use a sill pad like I'm doing here, it'll be very easy to peel that off the pan. And we can serve that right alongside as an extra little treat. But no matter what you're using to line your pan, once our zucchini boats have been cheesed, they are ready to transfer into the center of a 400 degree oven for about 20 minutes or so, or until our cheese is beautifully browned and our zucchini is just barely tender. And how we'll know is we're gonna poke it with things. All right, things like forks or toothpicks or skewers or the tip of a knife. And while we don't want soft and mushy and collapsed, I really do think we want these fully tender. And of course, that's just my preference. Right, just like real tacos, you could do soft shell or crunchy shell. So if you want to cook these less, go ahead. In any event, once those are done, we'll go ahead and serve them up with, as I mentioned, a few pieces of that crispy caramelized cheese. Oh yeah, I would take a whole plate of that. Hey, are you thinking what I'm thinking? And then personally, I like to finish this up by garnishing with some diced tomato, some freshly sliced green onions, a drizzle of sour cream, and then last but not least, some torn cilantro. Oh yeah, you heard me, torn. I think I'm done chopping cilantro. It never looks that good. Speaking of which, I saw a cilantro stem which I went to pull off, and it somehow grabbed and pulled off that piece of green onion, which you could not do if you tried. So that was weird. But anyway, the point is you go ahead and garnish this with whatever taco fixings you want. And that's it, our taco stuffed zucchini boats are ready to enjoy. So I grabbed a fork and knife and asked the captain for permission to come aboard. And I sliced myself off a nice piece. Come on, you can do it. Whoops. Oh yeah, there we go. Whoops. Okay, third time's a charm. And that, my friends, once I eventually got it into my mouth, was a shockingly delicious bite of food. Just absolutely incredible. So I went ahead and cut an even bigger piece. Only this time I used the fork with the tines going in the right direction. And everything worked out much, much better. And as I rotate this plate around so you can get a little better look, you can see what I think is the perfect proportion between our taco meat filling and our perfectly cooked zucchini boat. And while I'm not saying zucchini should replace tortillas in your regular taco routine, what I am saying is they could. Since at no time while I was eating this, was I thinking this is good, but I wish I had a regular taco shell. Okay, it never crossed my mind. So I really was thrilled with how this came out. But anyway, that's it. What we're calling taco stuffed zucchini boats. Whether you're one of these people that has to trick their family into eating vegetables, or you're just looking for a way to make eating zucchini a little more fun and exciting. Either way, I really do hope you give this a try soon. So please follow the links below for the ingredient amounts, a printable written recipe, and much more info as usual. And as always, enjoy.